Because you know it's only Jesus that can help you. It's only Jesus that can help you. You will tell Jesus. You will let Jesus know everything about your body. Whatsoever bothers you, you let him know. Is your body bearer? Is the generous giver? You will tell him. You will let him know. And ask the Lord that the Lord will open your eyes of understanding. As we study his word this evening, titled The Generous God and His Children, so that you will know how to receive from your Father, who is the generous God. And pray that the Lord will speak mightily through me to bless you. Talk to the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for the way we have sung that I must tell Jesus. Jesus alone can help me. Oh, Father, I pray that through thy word we will get a clear understanding of your generosity and our right as a child of God, as children of God, to receive those blessings that you have reserved only for thy children. And the manner and way in which to obtain it from you, you grant everyone the understanding and make them start appropriating it in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Father Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, the title of today's Bible study is the generous God and his children. We know last uh, Bible study we started studying the book of James. We started studying the book of James. And if you have not uh, listened to that Bible study, you can go to the internet and you get it there and you'll be blessed uh, beyond expectation in Jesus' name. And it will help you to really flow in in this continuation which is the generous God and his children. In our past study, we uh, studied James chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. And there we saw that uh, who the Lord used to write this book of James. And we spoke about uh, four different James, but one became the author. And that is James, the brother, the half-brother of Jesus Christ. Uh, because we find out that the first James was beheaded. James, the brother of John, was beheaded. And the other James is called James, uh, the son of Alphaeus, or James the Less. And those two were eliminated out of it. And finally, James, the brother of Jesus Christ, became the James uh, who was the writer, who became born again after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ, after the death of Jesus Christ. And now we are looking at the generous God and his children. James chapter 1, from verse 5 to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not in wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toes. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Praise the Lord. So our God is a generous God. He created man and all things for man to enjoy and be comfortable with. However, man disobeyed God and received a just recompense. Man was sent out of Eden and the creations were caused because of man. Nevertheless, God showed us his goodness upon man, uh, upon man, believers and unbelievers alike. He showed us his reign upon believers and unbelievers alike. His sun shines upon believers and unbelievers alike. He snows falls upon believers and unbelievers alike. He gives his oxygen freely to both believers and unbelievers. 
However, he reserves some special blessing. He reserves what? Some special blessings for believers only. For believers only. You are special. I say you are what? You are special. You can say to yourself, I am special. Say to yourself, I am special. So God reserves some special blessings. For his children only, for believers only, to be obtained from him at will. No special blessing. God will not force it on you. You are the one to request it from God at will. Are we getting it? So you will not say, God knows my father and he knows everything I need. Why can't he just give it to me? No. There are some who wants you to request at will. He has, we are children when they are still baby. We give them everything. You understand? But as they are growing, as mad that they are growing, we expect them to ask some things that they need. We know they need it. Are we getting it? But as a mark that they are growing, that they are not babies again, they are not toddlers again, we expect them to ask. And it shall be what? Giving. So that is why all these special blessings, God expects us to do what? To ask at will and use them freely. What are these reserved blessings only for believers? We are going to see it as we go. We see from our text we read, it said in verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, wisdom, if any of you lack what? Wisdom. Let him ask of God. He didn't say God will force it on him. He said, let him do what? Acts of God that give it to all men liberally and operated not, and it shall be given in. He now shows us some ways, some things, uh, uh, ways we are to obtain uh, uh, these blessings from the Lord. So, uh, this reserved blessing, what are they? The topic of our study today, the generous God and his children, we are going to look at it in three parts. So that we might be able to understand what these reserve blessings are and who can enjoy this reserve blessing and how we can obtain it. So we are looking at it at three points. The first point is sinfulness robs you of God's blessings. Sinfulness robs you of God's what? Blessings. Point two, blessings reserved for believers only. Blessings reserved for believers only. And the last point is how to obtain these blessings. Which blessings? The blessings reserved for believers only. How to obtain these blessings. Let's look at first point. Sinful, sinfulness robs you of God's blessing. Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Verse 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 59. Verses 1 and 2. He said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shutting, that it cannot save. Neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. He said, the hand of God is not shutting. No, his hand is too short. That's why he can't reach me to bless me. No. His hand is not shut in. Oh, his ear maybe is dull of hearing. That's why he couldn't hear me. No, his ear is not heavy. It's not dull of hearing. God hear clearly. He won't hear better than elephant. Elephant hear at a long distance. But God hear better than every creature. Because he's not a creature. He created all things. You understand? And even hear what we are thinking in our heart. So he said, now sinfulness robs man of God's blessing. Because he said, behold, the hand of the Lord, the Lord's hand is not shutting, that he cannot save. Neither is he heavy that he cannot hear, but your iniquities. Your what? Iniquities are separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. So sin robs of blessing. Sin is a very bad thing. Sin is a what? 
a very bad thing. It robs all that possess it of good things. All that possess sin, sin robs them of good things and bring upon them shame and reproach. Sin hinder your prayers by building a wall between you and God. How does sin hinder prayer? You build a wall between the person and God. That God cannot hear. God will not want to answer the person. And there are examples of people in the Holy Bible, in the scripture, who sin robbed of God's blessing. People like Adam and Eve. In Genesis chapter uh, 3, I know we know the story, but let's still look at it. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 to 24. It says there, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art caused above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dost, dost shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. What was the sin of serpent, a serpent there? Serpent allowed the devil to use him to deceive Eve. We understand? Ah, is the devil, is the devil. Ah, why did you allow the devil to use you? Are we getting it? So, because the devil used him, doesn't mean uh, he will be free. <laughs> We're getting it. He permitted the devil. The devil suggested to him uh, to use him. And he allowed the devil. Are we getting it? So, because of it, he received his own punishment. And God said now, he will be walking on his belly. And how does serpent walk? They walk on their belly. You understand? That's why the serpent has been suffering that. And look at 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy heel, and thou shalt bruise his... Uh, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Let me just even explain the literal something there. Now we see, when human beings see serpents today, what happened? You run, and your plan is to want to what? Kill the serpent. Enmity between, you understand? Between man and serpent. And also, the devil and Christ and believer. Enmity, because he's the one that used the serpent, so he's the one we'll be calling serpents now. You understand? But the serpent that allow him to use it, they are receiving their punishment, crawling on their belly. Now, verse 16, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. He said, because a uh, serpent deceived you, doesn't mean you will not receive your own punishment. Why did you allow him to deceive you? I've already given you instruction. Are we getting it? He said, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So that's the one God gave to the woman. Though that of man being over uh, is part of uh, the things before, but she did not wait to ask from Adam. Is it right? You understand? She just go ahead and did what serpent said. So God now clarified better. But that of conception became part of the punishment. Now, 17, Adam, because your wife deceived you, I told you and persuaded you, and you say that you love, 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 and you go and eat uh, what God says you don't eat. Are you not supposed to be the one that will correct her? You understand? Is it not so? So he now allowed the wife to say, uh uh, I do it. And if you say you love it, then you eat it now. Then say, okay, okay, I will eat it. Then he now ate it. Uh huh. You will receive your own punishment also. Are we saying that? And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cause is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Tongues also and tissue shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herbs of the feet. You see, man got his own too. You see that sin robbed one of what? God's blessing. He now says, I think, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the dust. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam. 
called his wife named Eve because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coat of skin and clothed them. Do sinner, yet God still showed them some love. He covered them. So that's why we say in the beginning, in the introduction, his son, he shine upon what? Believers and unbelievers. His air, the oxygen. Believers and unbelievers freely what? Breathe it in. You understand? But it doesn't mean their punishment, they will still not receive it. But the special one, uh, blessing that are reserved for the believers, they will not get it. Are we getting the point? So, look at verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. God drove him out. So sin robs people of God's blessing. Two, Cain, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 8 to 13, and Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? He thought God doesn't see everything. You understand? Maybe he has looked at his right and left. He looked up, he looked down, he looked back and front. He said, Nobody. Then he finished him. God said, Where is your brother? And I said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? So I will just be keeping him and following him about. And ten. And he said, What hast thou done? I saw it. You think he see him? What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And now art thou caused from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. You see, even the ground, because of him now, the ground also suffer. The ground that opened his mouth, that allowed the blood of Cain to fall on him. You understand? So, because when the ground is caused, it's the man that will still suffer it. Are we getting it? So, 12. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee as strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. That is, he will just be running. Nobody is pursuing him. He will be running. If you have seen people that kill people before, they will always be afraid. They can't do. That's why you see many people cannot do without holy what gone, because they've killed somebody before. They are afraid they are going to kill me now. They are going to kill me now. Even they are sleeping, gone will still be by their bed. If they just hear one footstep. Hey, hey, they can't sleep well. You understand? But so he now says, 13, and Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can be here. But when you were killing your brother, you didn't know it would be so. Eh? You understand? So, you see, sin robbed one of God's blessing. Judas Iscariot, that would have been one of the prominent apostles. He was having a good position as the uh, treasurer in the church. You understand? When Jesus was here physically, but he lost it. Matthew chapter 26, verse 15. Matthew 26, 15. Matthew 26, 15. It says here, And said unto, I read 14 and 16, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest, and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they con covenanted, that is the promise, with him to 30 pieces of silver. We give you 30 pieces of silver. So he sold Jesus. This man liked money. He liked what? Money. Everything is business. You see, I can one say one is serving God if no profit come out from it. If I sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, that's again 30 pieces. You understand? So, he sold Jesus. But look at what now happened. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. 
verse 16 to 20. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1, verse 16 to 20. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us, and had obtained part of this ministry. Now, this man pursues a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling ahead long, falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers of Jerusalem, insomuch as the field is called in their proper tongue, al, al, uh, aseldama, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalm, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bish, uh, bishopric, let another take. His position as an apostle, let another take. He lost his what? Blessing. The sin robbed him of his blessing. 36 pieces of silver that he couldn't even spend. You understand? Because later I took it back to the priest. Say, I have offended innocent blood. They said, what is that one to us? Keep the money. Then he went and he threw the money on them. He went and hung himself. He fell headlong and he, uh, he gushed out. And that one, he went straight to where? Hellfire. Because committing suicide also is a sin. From one sin to another sin. Also, Achan is another one. In the book of Joshua chapter 7, Joshua chapter 7, sin robs of, of God's blessing. Joshua chapter 7, verse 19 to 25. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, Glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what has thou, what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And they can answer Joshua and said, I indeed, I, uh, he said, indeed I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoil a goodly Babylonish garment, a goodly what? Babylonish garment. What is that worldliness? Babylonish garment. What is in the Babylonish garment? God said, don't take all those things. But then you hide, you go and take Babylonish garment. What does he gain from the Babylonish garment? Does he feel his stomach that he is no more hungry? Oh, I wear the Babylonish garment. What is all that? May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Uh -uh. He said, when I saw among the spoil a goodly Babylonian garment and two hundred shekel of silver and a wedge of gold of fifty shekel weight, then I coveted them. I lost after them. Ah, look at this garment. Look at the silver, the gold. I coveted after them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of the, my tent and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garments, since that's what he liked. They took him along with him, so that they all go together. You understand? And the wage of gold and his sons and his daughters, because they didn't report the case. Papa has stolen that thing God said we shouldn't take. See, shh. My wife, shh. My son, shh. My daughter, shh. They all say, okay, daddy, we should shh. Okay, all of them, shh. You understand? But when the problem came, they all suffered together because they were part of it. They were what? Part of it. If they don't want to be part of it, they will have done like that uh, uh, little child that uh, heard about a story that uh, somebody, the mother owns money was coming, and then the mother told and said, 
tell that person that uh, I'm not at home. When the person now knock and oh, she open the door, he say, where's your mother? She said I should tell you that she's not at home. That one, that's not part of it. Because she said, she said I should tell you. You understand? So they should have said, Papa said we should say, shh. You understand? So they will be free. But they were part of it. So that's why they took them also. And his son and his daughter, and his oxen, and his ass, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought, brought them unto the valley of Alcor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stone. With stones. And burned them with fire. After they had stoned them with stone. And had stoned them with stone. So we see. They, stone, they have to suffer for it. But now we don't stone somebody physically. We use the stone of the world. You understand? You speak against the evil the person has done. You are stoning. That's the stoning. Are we getting it? Are we getting it? But no physical stoning now. That's the Old Testament. But the New Testament, we use the stone of what? The world. By castigating the person with the world. Rebuking the person. Are we getting it? Okay. Now... But he robbed himself and his family of the blessings of God. Because all of them will have entered Canaan land and enjoyed those blessings in Canaan. But now because of garment, Babylonish garment, he lost everything. All the good labor he has labored around the world, Jericho along with them, now all is for, uh, for, uh, for gone because of Babylonish garment. I pray God that or with ordinary garments or wanting or the other will not rob you of God's blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. We understand. This is the latest. I must belong. Uh -uh. You belong to God. You don't need to belong to the world. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We know that's of course the problem. You want to do what? Belong. Belong to who? To the world. Are we getting it? But you belong to who? Praise the Lord. You belong to God. You belong to Jesus. Now, another person there is uh, another people. This was even a group of people. Israel. In Hosea chapter 8. Hosea chapter 8. Hosea chapter 8. Hosea chapter 8. Verse 2 to 4. Israel shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. Eh, is, do you really know me? We know thee. Israel hath cast off the things that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. And you are saying, My God, we know thee. But why did you cast out what is good? Why did you cast out the word of God? Why did you cast out the truth God has told you? You understand? Because of it, enemy will do what? Pursue. Are we getting it? Because enemy is not supposed to touch the child of God because we're protected by God, isn't it? But because he cast out what is good, he cast out the word of God, he cast out the instruction God had given to him or her. Then enemy does what? Pursue. It's like if you build your house and you uh, cement everywhere, you let everywhere be completely surrounded. No rats and no what? Snake. But if there is a hole, what will happen? What will happen? Rat and snake. Especially those rats that are, uh, you know, there is some species of rats that can very bend very well. I'm not talking of a raccoon, those who are big, big one. You understand? Yay! If you make any little uh, hole, they will enter. I don't know how their body is. They will just go up So, but if you seal everything, they will not see anywhere to enter. Are we getting it? So that's why God said we must not cast out what is good. Look at it. He now says, verse 4 They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols, and they made may be cut of that they may be cut off. Now let me explain it. Now God has made a uh, demand of the house to be what? King. And the 
wife is the queen. But if instead of the king being the one controlling the house, the another person outside is the one giving this thing and uh, others are obeying instead of obeying what the king, then they have made uh, themselves what another king which God doesn't know. Are, are we getting it? So that is part of uh, what God is saying here. Are we getting the point? So God is saying we must not have another king. And if we have another king apart from Jesus Christ, Jesus giving us uh, his own word, called the command and things he wants us to do. And another person is saying, uh, that papa say, that this thing say, that, that, that papa is talking about is an abalist. He said this thing. That one is given command. He said you should do this, do this, do this. Take this poorly white powder, put it in so so and so, do that. And the person is obeying that. He has made another what? King. Are we getting it? So the only king is who? Jesus. And the king in the family is who? The father in the house. But the king over that father is who? Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, but if one make another king, the enemy will do what? Pursue. Then Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. Ananias and Sapphira, they promised, they, they saw that uh, one uh, disciple, uh, disciple of Jesus Christ, he gave generously. He sold his land to help other brethren in the church. So the apostles were praising that one. So Ananias and Sapphira and his wife, they now say, okay, let us sell one of our land also and give it to the church to help. Uh, the brethren that are in need. So, but this when they sold the land, let's say they sold it for around hundred uh, thousand. They now came to the church. They gave fifty thousand. It's no problem. You understand? They should have said, "Oh, we sold our land for hundred thousand, but we want to give fifty thousand to the church to help the brethren that are in need." You understand? But they now say. You see, we sold our land also. We sold it for 50,000. We gave everything. We sacrificed. We do what? We sacrificed. So they want to receive the same praise with uh, the other brother. So God now spoke through Peter. See, when you did sell the land, was it not your own? Even when you sell it, sell, sold it, is it not in your power to give whatsoever you like? Why are you lied? Why have you lied? Uh, lied now? You are not lied to man. You have lied to God. He fell down and do what? Died. So they gave the wife opportunity also. After some hours, she came. The man said, uh, "How much did you people sell the, the land?" Oh, we sold it to fifty thousand. Uh, why have you go nine put it? Why don't you say that we sold the hundred thousand? But this is what we want to give. Nobody will be it's your own. You understand? Now say you connect with your husband to lie. The feet of those that went to bury your husband, they are close by. They will carry you to she also fell and died. Because God that gave the uh, life just took back the what? The life. We understand. So what God is saying is that we don't need to lie. Lying rob one of God's blessing. So this one now they die without preparation for uh, heaven. They were standing before, but they missed it and went to hell. You see, that's a very dangerous uh, thing, isn't it? Because of praise. What is praise? The other one was because of garment. This one now because of what? Praise. <laughs> God will help us in Jesus' name. Then another person, Esau, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 and 17. Esau sold his birthright because of a morsel of meal. That will not take him five minutes to finish. You understand? And many people also are committing sin that will not take them more than five minutes, fornication. And they want to go to hell because of that. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 and 17. Hebrews 12, 15 and 17. 16 and 17. So it says there that we should not be like Esau. That sold 
is death right because of the muscle of milk. Say, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one muscle of milk sold his birthright. right. For ye know how he uh, how that afterward, and uh, when he was he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. We understand. So, all these things rob people of God's blessing. A natural man in Isaiah 64, verse 6. That is, man generally. All the righteousness without coming to God, the man does, is like a filthy rag. Permit me to say, you know what is filthy rag? It's what woman used to keep herself during her time. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, it's like a filthy rag. And when woman finishes using it, what does she do? Does she keep it? She does what? Throw it away. And the same way, now, all the righteousness that one field is doing, when, it's not, uh, when he has not surrendered to Christ, when he has not repented of his sins, it's like a filter. He said, but we are all as, a, as an unclean team, and all our righteousness are as filter. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquity like the wind have taken us away. He take us away and make us lose blessing if we are live in iniquity and refuse to repent and turn to the Lord. Let's go to the second point without any delay. Blessings reserved for believers only. In Psalm 84, verse 10 and 9, Psalm 84, verses 10 and 9, 10 and 11, I mean to say, Psalm 84, verses 10 and 11, it says here, For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God for than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. For the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. You understand? He said, a day in thy court is better than a thousand. A day in the presence of God, just like we are here now. He said, it's better than a thousand in other place. He said, I, better, it's, it's, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. And be a usher, say, come in, come in. Than to be the king in another place. Are we hearing it? Uh, do we understand what the Lord said? Okay. He now said, for the Lord God is a son. And uh, uh, his son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will they withhold from them that walk uprightly. So, there are special blessings reserved for believers. There are a lot of blessings God reserved for believers only. And these reserved blessings start from asking and receiving. They start from what? Asking and receiving. Because in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and it shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Then it now continue and it says, For everyone that uh, asks and receives, and everyone that seeks and shall find, everyone that knocketh, it shall be given unto him. And then he now went further. He said in verse uh, 9 to 11, he said, What man is there of you whom his son asks, uh, shall ask bread? He will give him a stone. So he was now making us know, he's talking of your father and son. Children and their parents. So children of God and God. Not unbeliever now. We understand. So he said, or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to... Uh, to them that ask him. What are these blessings? Reserved for believers only. They include the following. One, healing and deliverance. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 22 to uh, 20, uh, 26. We, see there, we saw there a woman that came to the Lord. The son, the daughter was uh, having a problem. And she came to the Lord for healing and deliverance of her daughter. She asks and asks, but Jesus will not listen to her. Let's quickly read it. Matthew chapter 15, verse 22 to 26. It says here, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, 
thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil, but he answered her ah, not a word. And his disciple came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. You understand? Can you imagine that? This woman keeps telling Jesus, ah, Have mercy on me. Come and heal my daughter. Come. Jesus did not answer her, and she continued following. The disciples said, Send her away, send her away. She's disturbing us. But look at verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent. But unto the Lordship of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread. This bread you are asking for is for the children. This healing is healing is for the children. Deliverance is for the children. Are we getting it? It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Are we getting it? He it says for the children. It's like you serve food for your children at home. Will you put the dog also to sit on the table to eat with them? So Jesus said this one is for the children. It's not for the dogs, it's not for unbeliever. Unbeliever normally they behave like dogs, you understand? Immorality, fornication, all those things. You understand? So now, so Jesus is showing us these reserved blessings are for believers. But uh, let's just quickly finish. I will have stopped there, but let's just quickly see that this woman finally received her own blessing. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. She became a child of God and received the blessing by faith. Jesus was saying, Dog. If it's another person who say, Dog, because I'm begging for something, you say, Hey, okay, hold your blessing. Then your daughter will remain with the problem. But she understood that he's talking of spiritual dog. You understand? So she said, the dog, in the natural, when the children are sitting on the table, they didn't put the dog on the table. The dog is uh, rolling its tail and going around to see whether any food will fall. Anyone, as the children don't know how to hold it well, some bread fall on the floor, the dog will quickly go and eat that one. He said, let some healing fall. Let some deliverance fall. You understand? And Jesus said, no, your faith is great. You are even becoming a child of God by your faith. Be it unto you. Then she got the children's bread. Praise the Lord. So, healing and deliverance is one of those special blessings reserved for believers. Two, wisdom. We saw that one in our text before. James chapter 1 verse 5 said, If anyone lack wisdom, let him do what? Ask. And we see that even uh, Solomon, he asked for that wisdom and it was given unto him. And uh, three, direction in life. You don't know the direction to take in life. You just, you don't know the decision to take the direction. You can ask God in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. If you ask God, He will direct your path. So don't trust on your own understanding. Always ask God. Always ask what? Ask God to direct your path. Four, reveal His secret things to His servant. Let's quickly open to this. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Amos 3, 7. God reveals his secret things to his servant. And secret things, he reveals it to his children. Even when people think they are hiding secret and you want to know about the matter, God can reveal it to you. Uh, Amos 3, 7. He said, Surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealed his secret unto his servant, the prophets. We remember Daniel. When the king of uh, Babylon had dreamed, he forgot the dream he dreamed, yet he struggled. He now told his magicians to come and tell him the dream. They said, we can't uh, tell you the dream. If you can tell us what the dream is, we can give you the interpretation. Then what happened? He said, they said they can't. He said, okay, they all should be killed. So they told Daniel, Daniel said, let the king not kill anybody yet. Give me three days. Give me some time to pray. They now prayed. God now revealed it to Daniel. Daniel now told the king his dream. 
and the interpretation, the king was surprised. You understand? So, the Lord is part of the uh, special blessing that God reserved for his children. Uh, five, he shield and protect his, uh, his children, he shield and protect believers. In Psalm 27, I know we read it before in Psalm 84, but let's read uh, 27 now. Psalm 27. Verse 1 to 7. I just want us to get some more things there. Psalm 27, verse 1 to 7. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemy and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp me, encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war, should rise against me. I, in this, will I be confident. Only one thing have I desire of the God of the Lord, that I will seek after, and I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, uh, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in His temple. For in the time of trouble, He shall hide me in His pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon the rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifice of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we see the Lord will protect his own. He will shield and protect his own. And uh, six, sanctification. Thank you, Chris. It's reserved for only believers. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, God said, Don't give holy things to the dog. Don't give holy things to help to the swine, I mean to say. He said, Because they will trample upon it. They don't know the value. You understand? They will trample upon it and come and rent you yourself. So that's why he said, we don't give it to them. And when Jesus prayed for sanctification, he was praying on behalf of believers only. In the book of John chapter 17, verse 15 to 17. John chapter 17, verse 15 to 17. John chapter 17, verse 15 to 17. He said, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So he said he's praying for these believers. They are not part of the world. They've been taken out of the world. They are already children of God. You understand? So sanctification is only a, a blessing that is reserved only for who? Believers. And another one is baptism of the Holy Ghost. In John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Verse 20, 37 to 39. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man taste, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the what? The spirit. Which they that believe. Which who? They that believe. So it's not unbeliever. It's only for believers. They that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Praise the Lord. So this blessing is uh, for believers only. This takes us to the last point briefly. How to obtain these blessings? How do we obtain these blessings? That the Lord has just showed us, which is reserved only for believers. In uh, James chapter 1, verse 5 to 8, he says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraided not, and it shall be given, uh, given him. But let him ask in faith, not in wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toes. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. 
a double-minded man, a double-minded woman, a double-minded boy, a double-minded girl is unstable in all his way. Is unstable in all his way. Praise the Lord. So many of God's children do not know how to obtain these blessings reserved for believers only. Some that do, some other do know, uh, they don't know that it is their right as a child of God to obtain it by themselves. They don't know it's their right as a child of God to obtain it by themselves. So they are looking for someone that will help them to what? To get it from God. But <clears throat> It's your right as a child of God to ask God and receive it. We understand. It's just like in a house. You have more than one, uh, you have uh, maybe two or three children or four or five or something like that. Now, all the children have right to approach the father or the mother to ask for what is the right of all the children. The right of all the children is food. Isn't it? The right of all the children is also education. You understand? The right of all the children is also health care. So, a child need, a, need health care. He said, he called the eldest one. I don't know whether daddy will care for my health. I don't know whether mommy will care for my health. He said, can you go and ask daddy? I'm having a headache if they will care for my health. <laughs> what would the daddy or mommy say? <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you know that you are my child also? Is it not so? So, the same with every child of God has this right. Are we getting it? Every child of God have what? This right. Though, it doesn't mean uh, one cannot help one another in prayer, we can. Are we getting it? But, you should know it's your right as a child of God. Praise the Lord. So, now, how do you obtain? To obtain this, you need to first know that we can all access the throne of grace. Hebrews chapter, which I've just explained. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. You see that we can all approach the throne of grace. It's our right as a child of God. You understand? And you can come boldly to the Lord. Like our children are not afraid to come close to us, isn't it? They know this is my daddy, this is my mommy. You understand? And if you are not careful, when you are even uh, occupied, if you take them to office or take them to your work, they will disturb your work. They won't know that this one is a, a, a sacred thing. Just like my daughter will want to run to the pulpit. You understand? So that's, that's it because they know this is my father, this is my... Uh, mom or something like that. Are we getting it? No. So now we can all approach God and receive from God. But now, how do we receive? Do we obtain these blessings, this special blessing? To receive this reserved blessing, you must one ask God only. Ask who? God. Ask God only. Don't ask uh, Mary like some say. They say Mary pray for us. No, 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 no. Ask God. You are a child of God. Ask God. In the book of John chapter 16, John chapter 16, God loves you and wants you to ask for him. John chapter 16, <clears throat> verse 23. <clears throat> he said, oh sorry, I mean, it's 15. John chapter 16, verse 23. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father. You understand? You ask God directly. Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. We understand. So, as a child of God, it's your right. You ask to obtain. You ask God the Father directly. Two, ask in faith. Don't ask doubting. We see in our text we read before that he said, but ask in faith. And Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, he said, for without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and the reward of them that diligently seek him. So ask in faith. And three, 
do not as amiss. James chapter 4, verse 4. Do not ask amiss. James chapter 4, verse 4. He said, Ye had, uh, sorry, James chapter 4, verse uh, uh, 3, not 4. Ye ask and receive not. You know, some who say, Oh, he didn't ask. But this one, they ask. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Not that the person really need that something. He's just lusting after it. Are we getting it? And he's asking God, God said, God said, where will I answer that one? That's lost, something you don't need. <laughs> you, you understand? And that is the problem of people that is affecting even income of many people. What is it? The thing that want, that is not the need of that person, which is just want. Which is just what? Want. Oh, I want this, I want this. Mm -mm, not what you want. What do you need? I need a car to take me to work and bring me back. Yes, that's right. That's a need. Are we getting it? Oh, I want a car that anybody that see me inside will say, aha, this one has arrived. That's not a need. That one you want to do what? Show off. Are we getting the point? So let it be a need. Don't ask for something that is want just to show off. Something that you are lost in after. Are we getting it? Because God will not have time for that one. We don't understand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Four. Ask in accordance to God's word. First John chapter 3, verse 23 at 22. Ask in accordance to God's word. For example, you know, some churches say, Enemy die, enemy die, enemy die, die, die. Some churches say what? Enemy die, enemy die, enemy die, die, die. Did God say you should pray for enemy to die? No. He will say you should pray for your enemy, pray for the salvation of your enemy. So, if you don't pray according to the word of God, you are praying for enemy to die, you are praying for the leg of that person to break, you are praying for... Mm -mm, God will not have time for all those things. And God will even count it as what? Sin. You understand? Then, pray persistently. Pray out persistently. You see there in the outline I mistakenly wrote, look 1,807, uh, uh, 8. But it's supposed to be Luke chapter 18, verse 7 and 8. So we see there, this is what the Lord is saying that we should do. Let's just read this Luke before we pray. Luke chapter 18. You must ask persistently. Until you receive. Until you do what? Until you receive. Don't get tired. 7 and 8, it says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Which cry, that is, which pray day and night unto him? Though he be along with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, Shall he find faith on earth? So you continue to ask until you receive. That's a sign of your faith. We got it. So we go to the Lord in prayer. Are you a child of God? If you are a child of God, then you should know that your God is generous. That our God is what? Generous. And he wants his children to enjoy the special blessing he reserved for only his children. And we have heard what those uh, blessings are. You can approach God and ask as a child of God. Don't say, oh, uh, I know I'm a child of God, but it's only pastor that can go to God and ask. No, you as a child of God, you can approach God and ask God. And God will give it to you. God will give it to you. What is that thing? Tell the Lord. The Lord is ready to do it. Is it wisdom? Ask the Lord. 
God will give it to you. Is he understanding of one thing or the other? God will give it to you. Is this secret thing? Ask the Lord. He will show it to you. Daniel was said a man that you can't hide secret from. All you need to do is to pray. And everything will be brought out. But it's not doing it for show off, but because of the need. Remember, it must be what you need. Not want, need, and the Lord will answer you. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord as a child of God. Know that sin robs from God's blessing. You will not allow sin in your life.